this is a treat to Super League fans worldwide. It seems like ages since we've done one of these. Uh, but here we are. We are recording a kind of playoff preview. I say kind of. The playoffs have already started. Uh, it was a very quick turnaround for game one, so we couldn't get one in beforehand. However, we are recording Saturday lunchtime. The main event of the playoffs starts tomorrow night as the perennial losers that are both the Devils and the Dragons remarkably finish top two. And uh, when I say remarkably, not only is it remarkable that they finished top two, they were separated by two goals. It wasn't even a point it was won by. It was two goals. Um, I'm pleased to say joining me this afternoon is the main man behind the Dragons. Jamie, how are you, pal? Yeah, really good. Strange feeling being here, but uh, yeah, it's just to be here. <laughs> It, uh, it certainly is weird that first time. And offering that neutral perspective, uh, Dragons number two fan, Steve Wright. Thanks for that, Snow. Are you all right? A uh, bit warm, but I am fine. Thank you very much. Um, for those who are relatively new to the Super League, let me just tell you a little story before we get started. If you go right back to the days before, um, you know, the days when the Devils had Swindon in the title, and the days even before Dragons existed, and they were a little thing called Football Monologue. Every year, 14 and 13, without fail, would be fighting <laughs> and Jamie. Um, we could not. So, sometimes I think Jamie might have got 12, um, but we, we were pretty much propping everybody else up. Yet we would always play out classic battles. Every game between Swindon yeah. Devils and Football Monologue was a 4-3 or a 5-4. Un unbelievable scenes in some of those games. And then the, the latest sort of reincarnation of the Super League came and the Devils dropped the Swindon name. Football monologue become the Dragons. They gained two extra dicks and Devils should have run away with it. Didn't. And then lost in the playoffs last year on a golden goal. What the fuck is golden goal? <laughs> and uh, Dragons managed to finish bottom, so nothing much changed for Jamie, but they said this year they were taking it seriously. All three dicks were fully focused on penetrating and getting the job done, and they did. From bottom to top in one season, Jamie, you must be absolutely delighted. <coughs> yeah, it's to say the change in turnaround has you know, been amazing for us. I think it... It does well for the Super League as well, because I think there are going to be every other team, like Stee and Dimble, who are down the bottom, who are thinking, well, you know, it, because everything is so tight, if you do change and get one or two different personnel in transfer-wise, it can, you know, it can give you a chance to challenge at the top. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, to be honest, I say, when, when the squads come out, they know, obviously, we all said, you know, we're going to take it seriously this year. And it wasn't that we didn't take it last year. It was just too many changes. So what we meant, you know, if we were to lose a game, we weren't going to kind of throw our toys out of the pram and go a bit crazy and kind of change every formation going. You know, last year we must have played out of 26 games. We must have played about 15, 16 different formations. So we just kind of knuckled down. And I'd say that the two boys, to say, have been brilliant. Would, uh, you know, he you know he loves a moan and I think he looks to kind of come off that he doesn't kind of care and that, but he's been... I'd say every kind of change that me and Dagan talked about, you know, whether it's player wise or formation, he's there on the game comparing players on the scout, looking at their abilities in these positions. Um, and I said the other day, Dagan does so much work. I think looking at the opposition who we play in, how many times they've changed things up, what they could possibly do. So we are kind of, you know, best prepared. So this season, I say it has been massively, I know people always say three people won't work, but when everyone is kind of pulling their way and, and they're doing their jobs well, it's, you know, obviously proved uh, that it can be the case. It's largely um, been a, a, both a topic of conversation and a bit of a joke. So, so forgive me for asking, but a lot of people have um, commended and praised the job that both Duggan and Wooder have done. What is it that you're still bringing to the team? I'm still a main man, aren't I? You know, I am <laughs> Mr. Dra I'm, I'm still Mr. Dragons, aren't I? <laughs> no, and you, you know, if, if I'm going to be totally honest, at the start of the season, I was probably, you know, as involved as the more I think as time went on, but a lot of kind of family circumstances, which as I said, still 
kind of obviously have my input with, with the team and things, but I think they, you know, I'm first to admit outside of it, maybe, you know, in terms of our team and the opposition, the, you know, in the last, <clears throat> say, 10, 15, they've probably been carrying it, you know, a, a bit more than I have due to kind of outside circumstances. But I think that does help and that does prove to other teams, you know, there are like Kieran, for example, he kind of wasn't involved a lot, didn't have maybe the time the same as I didn't have a lot of time this season at certain points. So there was other people there to pick up the can, you know, still had my input every game, but I think it does show that if you, you know, you can't just get any random and I think it's got to be someone who you have a good relationship and a bit of banter now with, but if you can find that right person, they can definitely kind of bring something to the table. And Steve, before we focus particularly on the game, I think this season, we said last year was the best year that the Super League had ever had. I think this year's already possibly eclipsed it again. I mean, um, if you go into what was the final day, I believe there was 10 teams who still had something to play for, whether it was, you know, four people challenging for top two spots. You still had um, two people, or was it possibly even three, outside the top six looking to get in. Um, you had yourself um, and Dimble Stroke here and battling to to avoid finishing bottom. And and as we alluded to there, um, if you look at going into going into the game, Dragons were third, Devils were fourth, and we finished one and two. Um, Devils scored six more than Dragons, but Dragons conceded eight less than Devils, and and th those were the fine margins that that uh, that tipped it. Yeah, I, I mean to think. Uh, again, and I think we'll be saying the same thing again come next season once people start delving into doing transfers, etc. Uh, they, no, but I never thought that the teams could get more rounded from people changing up from first draw, but it has done sort of from the initial draw to this season. And I think it will again to next season. Because obviously, people have had a couple of little chats and you know what people might be looking to do when, they, when and if they can. So, and it raises eyebrows again. But I think... The, the points for getting into playoffs, um, I think we're probably one at lowest there has been, uh, which says everything for... I, I mean, I just think, I mean, with no disrespect to everybody else, I think anybody else that's been in it before, um, I think the, the fact that the teams are more even and there seems to be a good quality of a manager right across the board as well, um, I think... And I think that's testimony, really, in, in my opinion, to where Martin lifted it back up when it looked like it was on its rear end. Um, and then got, got it all back involved and then obviously Ryan and pick it to another level this time but no, for, for you two lads uh, I mean I don't think I've seen a, I mean I, I watched for a few seasons before actually being invited to join I don't, I don't think I've seen a turnaround as remarkable as that bottom to top uh, when I did meet uh, after after we met up that night with Wooder and Dimble etc uh, I went to meet Ryan and Macca on the Sunday as well because they were out near us and Ryan were asking me a couple of questions about what he thinks of these certain things in the game. And one of them was, depending on the team your team takes over, does it have any historical resemblance on where they finish in the game? And I think I think the Dragons have actually thrown that out of window this year. Um, it's gone completely change it around like that. Uh, but see you both finish top. Uh, obviously, we, we all talk a lot between each other. Uh, I'm, I'm massively chuffed for both of you, really. Um, it... Obviously, as, as everyone knows, that there are certain different WhatsApp groups and Twitter groups and stuff. And, and the WhatsApp group's certainly been um, tense and, and trying <laughs> towards, the, uh, towards the end. But one of us did actually predict a Dragons Devils top two finish. And uh, <laughs> I'm to say it's one of the few predictions I got right. Before we move on, just to, to look at the, the game between Devils and Dragons, the first leg. I'm pleased to say that uh, incoming full-time Church Town manager, Mr. Dimble, has also managed to join us this lunchtime. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, lads. How are you doing? Let's go. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. And, uh, oh, is it still morning? Of course it is. Yes, it's still morning. Yeah. I keep thinking it's actually past lunchtime, but it's not. <laughs> we started early. How are you, pal? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, just uh, dealing with a, a manic household, but I've managed to escape for 20 minutes, so I thought I'd come and join you. And I'm pleased to say, unlike, I believe, the last recording we did, you do not look like a ghost. You actually look quite well tanned. <laughs> yeah, cheers, mate. I've, uh, I've been working on it. I've been going to the old salon. No, I just had a bit of sun. It was, uh, it was very bad lighting last time, I do agree. I've got a light on here now. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm pleased to be alive. 
<laughs> but, but we're doing a great time because we're just about to preview the, the clash of this season's Titans, leg one of Dragons v Devils. And uh, I want to give a massive shout out to Champ One, who, um, if you um, consider the, the amazing work the likes of Ian Edwards does in terms of kits, um, some of the some of the videos and stuff that get posted throughout the season, particularly for, from the Dragons, who I must say have, have been spectacular with some of their content this year. Um, Champ Swan's stats have been nothing short of incredible. And the, the dedication that it's taken to keep them up to date um, certainly needs mentioning. And uh, and certainly, if, if I could give an award, he would certainly get it. Um, I've been noting down the stats that he's provided from the end of the season, Jamie, and I believe the term in boxing is tale of the tape. Once I finish rattling through these, I think it will be seen that, that our game is on a knife edge, could not be split any tighter. Um, so I'll just go through them slowly. Uh, so these are all per game, and it's head-to-head, -head, and I'll do the Dragons stats first, okay? Um, so goals per game, Dragons 1.54, Devils 1.77. So very little there. Um, shots per game, Dragons 7.69, Devils 8.73. Um, goals per shot, you're getting 0.2 exactly. I'm getting 0.203. So again, virtually nothing. Um, on target percentage, you're getting 58. I'm getting 62.6. Um, corners, 1.88, 2.69. Uh, free kicks, 12.12 to 15.62. Uh, Throw-ins, 7.73 to 9.54. Your pass completion, superior, 73.2 to my 70.5. Um, your winning more tackles, 60.4 to my 58.8. But that we're talking, again, negligible amounts. You're winning 55.3% of headers. I'm winning 50.7. Um, you're conceding just over one goal a game, 1.08. And I think this is where it becomes crucial because I'm getting 1.38. So I'm almost conceding one and a half goals per game. Um, fouls committed are virtually the same. Yours 5.65, mine 5.42. There's very little split in the two teams and that's reflective in, in how yeah. the league was won by literally two goals, I think. Yeah. Well, as you said, you know, like, like you just said before, you read those stats out. We, you scored six more than us, and we scored, we conceded eight less than you. So, although there's only slight differences in the stats, the differences are you do have slightly better shots and shots on target, and we do have like more tackles and, and more clean sheets. So, it is reflected in you know in the goals that were scored. But I don't think, as you say, it could be any time. Well, the fact the league was one on goal difference, you know, tells you it, you know it couldn't really be any tighter but I think the, the difficulty with the playoffs is <clears throat> you know people start to like in the league you don't think like for example you could have impenza on a book in and in a league normal game it's, it's not you, you would never second guess an impenza would just play but in these playoffs you do start to think right do I leave this guy out and put this guy in you know, some people, you know, you see what Greaves he did the other night completely change into three up front, which I think he's never played before. Because I think sometimes you just kind of second guess yourself, especially for us. Um, I think, you know, it's only two seasons in, but I think you've beat us all four times that we've played. So although the kind of table is really close, we've always struggled against the Devils. So that's something we've had to consider when picking our team, looking back and say, right, what formations did we play the last two games? What did Fifey play? If it's a normal formation that we normally play, is something not working? The five he's doing to counteract it, so you've got to kind of weigh everything up, and and it can sometimes, you know, with the two one nils the other day, but it can sometimes make for interesting games because, you know, you, you don't quite know what everyone's going to do. We're trying to second guess what you're going to do, and you're probably doing vice versa with us. So it is, it is, in, you know, difficult and interesting at the same time. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. I mean, I think Doug and I were saying the other night, you guys considered three different formations for the game trying to guess what I was going to do and yeah. my reply to that is good luck because I'm trying to guess what I'm going yeah. to do because yeah. I had three different formations trying to work out what to do <laughs> and what you guys might do but uh, <laughs> do Steve um, is follow the narrative that both sides have been painting of the opposition um, and of each other to a certain extent I've said how 
I think Dragons have the best defensive line. If you go for the formation they've played the most part of the season, going from Edgar Davids in centre mid back to that, that massive wall of four, two good quality centre-backs. I know you've got the injury now and, and an excellent goalkeeper. Um, whereas they've been saying, obviously, their main issue is they don't have that proper elite forward. Uh, and for the Devils, and Penza, again, it's not been a, a stellar year by any stretch, but he is still the league's top goal scorer going into the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, I think I think expecting massive numbers from a from a striker from from any other team, from any other other than Impenza, really. Well, as we've seen now over the last two seasons, I think if you're getting in and around ten goals from one of your main forwards all season, I think it's. I think that's a, a reasonable season at this level. You know, you can't. Nobody can expect a fifteen to twenty goal season in season out because there's going to be, as we've seen, there's always going to be one that sort of goes and takes takes the mantle as top scorer, and then the rest are sort of coming behind within, like, say, in around ten. Um, there's there's just something about the Super League and the big name strikers and and big name players to an extent where. I think your likes of your, your Constantino, that's where he can sort of come to his far. I mean, he were, he were always one of my favourite players when we were when you're playing and when you were younger. Uh, and I think he's done he's done an absolute phenomenal job, in fairness. I, I don't think he's been given the full credit uh, that, that he overly deserves. Uh, but I can see why uh, they're in market for another striker who's given him a couple of options to obviously put a bit of pressure on each other and try and get that one firing just that little bit more. But... Uh, again, when you look at the start of the season, I'll go call we're playing in behind, scoring goals for fun. Uh, I think, me personally, I'd rather be getting goals from all around the team as sort of a team effort, uh, and then and not not concentrate on relying on one person because I think that's where you have a bit of a downfall. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> uh Dimbo, I'll ask you shortly um, where you think. The tie as a whole, particularly the first game, might be won and lost. I've got a few extra stats here taken from Mr. Swan. Um, so we'll also get Jamie's opinion on some of these. Um, and it will link into to where this tie might be won and lost. Devils score most of their goals in the first half. Dragons concede most of their goals in the first half. Dragons' goals are pretty fairly split throughout the game. Devils have proven they will concede at just about any point during the game. So both teams will take positives from that. Dragons did not concede more than two in any game this season. Devils did it a few times. Um, current form, Devils won their last three going into the end of the season. Dragons won two, drew one, lost two of their last five. Um, perhaps not to expect late drama, Dragons scored two in the 90-plus minutes across the whole season but didn't concede any. Um, Devils scored two and conceded one um, across the whole season. Um, again, home, home to away form is pretty consistent. Dragons won five at home and had the best away record in the league, winning seven. Devils um, had the joint best home record, winning seven with uh, Norman Burton. Um, and they also won six away. Um, consistency, first half of the season, second half. Dragons got 21 points the first half of the season, 23 in the second. Devils got 22 both halves of the season. Um, and as Jamie alluded to, both games this season ended 2-1 to the Devils. Where are you, when you see that, again, it, it, it all looks pretty even to me, Dimble. Where are you looking for the, the main men to come from over the two legs? The game will probably follow a pattern of being quite tight, I think the Dragons, defenders, defence, midfield would um, will look to nullify your attacking players. And I think it's going to be really tight. So it's um, it's a flip of a coin for me, really. Um, yeah, I, I think everyone's available as far as I know. I think five you're missing a couple, aren't you? Um, and I need to see the lineups before I kind of made a prediction, but I can see it. A tight game, one goal either way, or even most likely the result will be a draw after ninety minutes. Um, possibly looking at extra time um, over the two legs as well. Um, I wouldn't be surprised at that at all. But what I will say is that is, though it seems really important, because obviously you win and you you can relax for a couple of weeks and uh, and you're in the final. I think last season um, Boston lost in the in the, the minor, whatever it's called, um, and they made it to the final and won. So it, it's not the end of uh, your season if you do lose. 
I can see, if I'm making a prediction, I can see my bold prediction is uh, Dragons to edge it over the two legs and then losing the final to, to Fifey. That would be my prediction. <laughs> Well, I'd, I'd certainly take that now if it was on offer. I'm sure, was, I'm sure yeah, if it was think... on we would take it as well, to be fair. Yeah, just because that would properly, properly enrage the uh, <laughs> Ant and deck. <laughs> but, uh, it does lead into a very valid point. Um... Something to ask you about, Jamie. Obviously, everyone knows now how crucial it is to finish in the top two, top two spots. I think, obviously, the winners have always finished in the top two spots. And I think it's only twice um, that someone from outside the top two has even appeared in the final, possibly three times. Um, yes. So as Dimble alluded to there, it could, we could be talking about this first leg and then in a week or two's time, we're talking about the same game again in the final. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, it is extremely difficult. Um, as I say, I follow the A-League in real life. I'm a massive fan. It's, you know, it's probably my favourite league. Um, and obviously they follow exactly the same format we play. And I think in like the 10 years that I've watched it, I think every team there has won it from the top two because it just is extremely difficult. You pick up these suspensions and bookings and they say you play in, you know, the, the away games. Like, for example, if you're in between three and six, when it comes to the pre-final, you're the away team. And then when it goes into the grand final, it's, you're, the, you're the away team as well. So I think to beat the kind of, top two teams both away from home in the last two games after playing already the playoffs between three and six I think it is extremely difficult you know you're going to pick up injuries possibly suspensions and things so I think it is it is massively and obviously it's it's lovely to win the league as we've done but we've always said you know kind of going from like game 15 on weeks let's just get in the top two if you can win it great but if you get in the top two you give yourself a massive chance because I think it is extremely difficult then when it goes between three and six. Um, I do want to have a, a little look at the other playoff games as well. But before we do, and I'm not going to ask you to to name your 11, obviously. Uh, we'll, we'll keep the the masses waiting in, in, in a bit of um, suspension. But uh, what team news can you, can you advise? I mean, I'll happily go first. Um, for the Devils, we've got three missing. Uh, Nesta's still injured, Emerson's injured, and uh, the third one uh, was unlikely to play anyway, but still a first team. And Diego Tristan's injured. Um, we also have two players um, who are one booking away from missing the next game. So we're, we're having to balance the squad up and, and say maybe just play one of them. So if you get suspended, we've got the other one available. Um, but, and, and as I said earlier, I have considered three different tactics and I have now submitted the one for the first leg and, and hoping it it comes off okay what what's uh what's news like coming out of dragons yeah every everyone's fit for us um I think yeah. the yellow the yellow cards is the tricky one because as you say you could play like they're one game away but if you if you don't play them this game and then you play them the next game to get to the grand final if they pick up a book and they're going to miss the grand final so you know, I think sometimes you've just got to, you know, risk it, unfortunately, because there is, you know, no, there's no good time to lose them. If you to lose the next game and you're going into an eliminator and you're losing some of these players. Um, so everyone's available for us to say the main thing has obviously been the formation, because as you say, we, other than the win against Gazelles, we were, we weren't on a great run. I think we had gone like four without the win. Um, Cause you know, I think after game week 20, we were like five points ahead of second and seven ahead of, third or six ahead of third so we were in quite a strong position where we kind of bolstered up until the last game so I think all season for us our, our away form has been massive so for us you know I'm not trying to be defeated but I would probably take take a draw now going into the second legs I think our, our away form has been really strong um, so yeah I think I'd kind of take a draw now and you know be confident then going into the second leg Well before uh hostilities really start to rise and Duggan in particular starts getting a bit <laughs> down the way. Um, I will wish you good luck uh, for your playoff <laughs> campaign, your, your maiden, your debut playoff yep. campaign. Um, it will last at least two, well, no, it'll last at least three games. You yep. know that. You know yep. it'll last at least three games. So so try and enjoy it. Yeah, and, I will. <laughs> and I'll see you on the other side. Yeah. We will be. <laughs> this is one for the, uh, the Super League curious 
let's move on to the, uh, the other tie. Steve, I'll come to you first. Um, Northern Burn v Loco. Uh, finished 1 0 to Burn, Henri in the 41st. Um, let's, if I can, let's look at Burn first. And before the game even started, the question was. Did they throw away a golden opportunity? Because really, they should have finished top two, shouldn't they? I, I think that I think that's really difficult to say with how many chopping and changes there were, mainly towards back end of the season as well. Uh, I mean, I know you sat up like an house on fire and you were sat there for a few weeks. Um, but I, I think the top two were really had to call because of that much chopping and changing. I mean, Sloss were nowhere near out of it. They, they can throw a, a 5 0 win, 5 1 win here any, anywhere against anyone as well. So, uh, no, uh, I mean, to be fair, that Ian's obviously in the same position as you were last year and Jamie is this year, you know, dizzy heights of places that he hadn't been before. And, you know, I'm massively, massively chuffed for him doing it. Um, but in terms of the massive opportunity, I do think there were more of an opportunity in that game for that team to put local to bed a little bit more, considering what they were playing. Uh, they, had, they had more than enough overrunning in midfield uh, to, to, to really try and put some pressure on. Um, Greavesy in this second leg I don't think he'll go outlandish I, I think I saw something last night with no strikers, I can't yeah, he's advertised zero up front I can't I can't believe that for a month of Sundays when you're chasing a game but he just put him in behind ball so I think if he doesn't go through Greavesy I genuinely think it's for him not playing his normal normal game uh, as opposed to overthinking it this time um, but yeah, I, I do see, unfortunately for Greasy, I do see Burn going through this next leg. Well, you kind of touched on it there, and, and my question was going to be when we put, you know, if we flip it and look at Loco, has Greasy kind of fed into his own narrative here? Like, he won the Super League last year playing a way that no one's ever played before, and now he's kind of trying to reinvent the wheel when he already had the wheel. And, and it, perhaps the wheels have come off at the wrong time because of it. Yeah, uh, I mean, obviously last season, this season I, I've not done it as much and finished just a place worse off, so I used to say it don't work at times, but I think it too much last season. Uh, I think Dragon's a testimony to, and Burn as well, to stick with the formation regardless and it will <laughs> work itself. Uh, but yeah, we, when he had so much there and he had the right players playing there for him, I think I think his thing is he's trying too hard to get numbers out of players such as Amar, which has done fantastically well for him, probably one of the best I've seen in the league. But as he concentrated too much on getting big numbers out of players to try this this tactical superior that he keeps putting out about himself, trying to he's got no to prove to nobody, you know, with how good he is at this game. He really am, and but it feels like he's forever trying to prove himself and Prove, and then, but then he's gone the other way, trying to prove that he's not just this defensive-minded player. And but look where it's got him this year by by running away from it. And uh, and Dimble, if I can ask you about Sloth's full Chester, there's a a distinct clash of styles. You've got Sloth all action. We're happy to win seven six against Mac's much more methodical approach. He's not seen quite as um, anti football, let's say, as loco, but it is a lot more one nil is his ideal um, scenario. But they were the better side. Um, they did, as we say, pick up the one nil win away from home. Um, and at the very end, what could be crucial across the whole tie was a Buffon double save, um, sort of 88, 89 minutes. Yeah. A big respect to Maka and uh, I think he's he's got he's done a few strange things this season, but now he's fully focused on it. I can't see him losing this this second leg. Um so I would expect them to progress. But then Sloths can do anything to anyone, like like Steve just said. Um you can they can they can score three or four goals in, in a half, uh, no problem. But with um with Zeroberto missing, I think Guerrero went off injured last game as well. Is that correct? Yeah, that's, he, that's, might, he might be out as well. So two two massive losses for him. Um, I, I don't know how I don't know how he's he's pulled out the results he has with that team. If I'm being honest, he's um, Rob's been one of the better managers over the last two seasons. He's just hit bad form at the wrong time. 
two seasons running. Um, if he'd have put the runs, the runs together at the right time, he, he would probably be sat here. He'd have got to the final last year, and he'd probably be getting to the final this season. But it just kind of seems to peter out for him, which is a bit, a bit worrying for him. But um, definitely deserves like the credit for, for everything he's done with that squad. Um, and I think yeah, Macca's Macca's canny. Um, even though he's he's persisting with uh, with Chris Sutton. And, I don't know. Don't know why he's doing that. Um, <laughs> I, I, I mean, if you're, talking, if you're talking about anti-football, then surely Chris Sutton on this game is anti-football. <laughs> but I think Maka highlighted, actually, that he's probably scored as many important goals, like match winners or, or pulling a point from a defeat, than, than just about anyone else uh, for any team this season. Yeah, he's, he's definitely scored some key goals, hasn't he? But his actual yeah. overall performance has been pretty poor. Um, yeah, from, from what I remember. So yeah, it's it's a strange one. He's got some good players in the squad. I, I don't know if he'll stick with him for this game, but then again, doesn't need to to tear up any trees in this game. He just needs to keep it tight and nick goal like he has been doing. Um, so before we conclude this little chat, gents, um, Burn are winning one nil. Uh, Fulchester are winning one nil. I will ask each of you who of those sides you think will progress. And because we know that Jamie will say Devils and I will say Dragons, I will ask just Steve and Dimble who they think will progress over the two legs straight into the final. Um, I, I will say I think Byrne have got the beating of Loco. They're already winning. And I think that Ian's a lot more settled. He's not going to try and reinvent the wheel. So I, I can see Byrne winning the game and the tie. Um, as much as I love what Sloths do, I think they've been ridiculously hit by injuries towards the end of the season. And I've always said that if there is any manager I would back in the playoffs to pull off a result, it would be Maka. It was much to my detriment last year that it's the only time a golden goal has been scored that I can remember in the Super League. So um, I'm going to say Burn and Fulchester both win their second legs and the ties overall. Um, Steve, you're first up on my screen. Who progresses from all three times, please? Uh, yeah, uh, I, I think I've already said that Burn will go through. Um, I do think Busy might overthink it again. Um, I, I really do hope that's false what, what he's put out. But yeah, I fancy Burn in a, in a tight game, still to get a win as well. Uh, yeah, I think, and going to the Sloss Wolchester game, can't see past Wolchester. I mean, the most infuriating thing must have been for Rob from that game when he's got. Sally Amadic, his left wing back's getting man of the match and didn't score a goal. If that was ever got up there, he could have had two or three goals. So, and without him and without Guerrero, I certainly I can't see him at all beating Fulchester uh, in the game or, or obviously not going through. Um, I actually think Dragons might go through this to the from this. In my opinion, Dragons, if they have a chance of winning this, have to go through in this tie. I think your squad is more capable for the extra games to get to the final after, personally. Okay. Dimbo? Yeah, I think all, all three ties are very, very tight. Um, I wouldn't put it past any of the teams from, from doing it, but I would predict Burn, Fulchester and Dragons to edge to edge all the games um, all by the odd goal, I'd imagine. Um but yeah, like I said, it, it, it's so kind of it's so kind of level. I, I love I love the way the league's been this season. Such a level playing field, pretty much throughout. There's a couple of probably two or three teams that are a little bit disadvantaged by squads, but even those squads aren't bad bad enough to kind of lose games. And even kind of um, ourselves and Dudley Hill, um, bottom bottom of the league, still got twenty six and twenty seven points. I think it was. So it's like still you're only kind of. Um, three or four wins off pushing for the playoffs so yeah it's just it's just respect to the league it's been really tight really competitive all the way through so I think that'll, that same spirit will kind of carry on to the playoffs so good luck guys, good luck guys. yeah I think um, I agree with Steve as well if Dragons want to win it just I don't think they could handle the extra games um, with the, the smaller less kind of deep squad so yeah I think that's the, probably the key for, for Dragons winning the whole thing just to clarify, it would only be one extra game. <laughs> Is it only one? No. Yeah, it's one leg. One leg. Yeah, one le well, this one. 
Who decides that? Yeah. 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 Two legs for Fidel's. Yeah. Yeah. You'll find over a 26 game season, you'll find to play a free game playoff campaign, but a four game playoff campaign, no. Yeah. no. Outrageous. <laughs> I thought it was, sorry, I thought it was two legs. Um why is why is your why is the dragons devils two legs this time and then one one in the, the next place? How it works, as, as I've explained multiple times to you, Dimble. <laughs> we even drew a little grid for you and the Duggan. Um, one, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth finish their Mickey Mouse playoffs. Then the winners of those two ties play each other over one leg, and yeah. then they play the loser of one v two over one leg. All right. Yeah. Understood. I did understand the uh, kind of the, the way it progressed, but I didn't realise yeah. down to one leg. That was all. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jamie, finally to you. Uh, obviously, I won't ask you to predict our game because we both know how it's going to pan out if we do that. Yes. Um, so if you can just, uh, are you going to um, stick with with all three of us who have said Burn and Fulchester to progress? Yeah, I think there'll be two draws on the night um, between those games, um, and I think they'll they'll go through. Um, I don't see you say Boston. I just. If he is playing that formation, I say to be honest, we all said the same, but in playing three up front than he did, so. Um, I'm not really sure what he would gain from post posting a false formation because I I can imagine Burner already in any way, so it wouldn't, you know, make much sense. So I I can probably see Greavesy going with the no striker. You know, when you're one 0 down, it doesn't make any sense. But yeah, I'm going for two draws on the night and uh, them two to go through. Uh, gents, as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for taking time out of your Saturday morning stroke. I think we're just kicking over into the afternoon, just. Just get in there. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your weekends, and no doubt we will uh, We will speak tomorrow as the yep. playoffs continue. Make sure yeah. that you join the Super League YouTube channel from, I'm going to presume, 9 o'clock. I haven't been told it's an earlier start or anything. Uh, yeah. There are three games tomorrow night, so... Uh, Join in, get involved in the chat and uh, enjoy what will be high tense yet high quality drama. Jamie, good luck. Cheers, and, you too. Um, thank Cheers, Fifey. Cheers, lads. See you, See you later. Lads. Ta-da.